What if you had to die for Jesus? What if you faced reality where they would give you two choices? Either you deny him that he is your Lord and Savior, deny your entire faith in him, or you would have to die. One day, you leave your job, drive home, you want to meet your family, call up your friend, mother, father, family member, maybe check your social media, come home, rest, eat dinner, maybe do homework with your children, or maybe just sit in front of your house looking at beautiful scenario, the nature, people walking by, children playing outside. Maybe you would like to take a walk, listen to the sound of nature, or maybe go visit your friend, take somebody for a dinner, watch your favorite movie, go to church fellowship with people, or family gathering, go see and hug your grandchildren, take them on the beach, go on a trip, or maybe you would just want to sit in your favorite couch and quiet yourself, but what if you turned TV, radio, or any other source of information that would say you will have to deny your faith in Jesus, otherwise you shall die. What would you do then? What would you tell your wife? What would you tell your husband, your family members, your friends, co-workers, neighbors, pastor, colleagues, social media? What would you do? What would you think? And how would you act? How would you prepare yourself how would you control overwhelming amount of thoughts and emotions and feelings running through your mind? What would be your response if you had to die for Jesus? Would you be willing? Would you back up? Would you change your mind? Would you fall into fear, depression, explanations? Would you blame God? Would you shout, scream, cry? What would you do if you had to die for Jesus Christ, the Messiah? Would you be strong enough to face the physical death? Would you remember his words spoken to your heart? Would you remember what he said in his word? Would you remain at peace? Joy? Would you give up? Deny him? Or would you deny your life? because of his love, because of your love, an intimate, personal connection and relationship that you have with him, would you truly then die, give up your entire life for him? What if you had to die for Jesus? What if one day you would have to make a choice that could result in being killed because of it? The pressing question we must face before facing death as a martyr would be, when did you die? And aren't you already living 
as if you already died. Now we have died with Christ. Romans 6 and 8. This is why Paul said in Colossians 3 and 5, Therefore consider the members of your earthly body as dead to immorality, impurity, evil desire, and greed, which amounts to idolatry. You are to mentally reckon, intellectually acknowledge, meditate on, think in such a way as to consider yourselves dead to sin. Have we not already made this sacrifice in the spiritual realm? The Apostle Paul would say that he dies daily. He gives up his ideas and thoughts and takes on the thoughts and desires of God. Our death in Christ is a death to the old self, the old ways, the sinful life. It is a reality and a hope. It is truth as well as life. Jesus so completely represented us on the cross that when he died, it is said that we died with him. The reason we can do this is because of what Jesus did on the cross. Only through the shed blood of the sinless man, Jesus Christ, could we be brought back from spiritual death. The reality of the crucifixion is that Jesus who knew no sin, would be made sin so that we could be made the righteousness of God in Him. 2 Corinthians 5.21 When He is raised from the dead, we too are raised into newness of life. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Therefore, if anyone be in Christ, He is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Realizing and acknowledging our deadness to sin is an important truth that God wants us to understand. But understanding it isn't enough. We must practice it by spending time meditating on it, seeing ourselves die with Christ on the cross, then with Him be buried, and finally see ourselves raised with Christ into everlasting life. A state where death as we know it no longer exists. For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Colossians 3 and 3. God sees the death of his children as precious in Psalms 115:16. This Hebrew word for precious is only used this one time in all of scripture. It holds with it a weight of value that can only be determined by God, never to be compared with the death of another person. It is a a one-of-a-kind act where we let go of one dimension and we take hold of another. For if we died with Him, we shall also live with Him. 2 Timothy 2 and 11 It very well may be that many will have to make the choice to lay down our physical lives for what we believe. But we prepare to do that by living now as those who have already died and have passed from death into life. We are convinced that the moment we take our last breath in this mortal body, we will be in the presence of God. Christ bore the pain of spiritual death, separation from the Father on our behalf. Because of that, we never have to experience life or death without the presence of God. Jesus died alone apart from the Father so that we would never have to endure that pain. Be faithful unto death and I will give you the crown of life. Revelations 2 and 10 They overcome the accuser of the brethren because of the blood of the Lamb, because of the word of their testimony, and they did not love their life even when faced with death. Revelation 12 and 11.